Hello, I'm Frank Vassalero with CBSN Minnesota. This afternoon, I had a chance to speak with the host of Face the Nation, Margaret Brennan at CBS. She is one of several journalists covering the election tomorrow night. We spoke about the importance of Minnesota to the presidential race, when results may be available, and more. Here's a look at that interview. Join us now is Margaret Brennan, host of Face the Nation. Margaret, thanks for your uh, time this afternoon. I know it's a very busy time. Minnesota's a busy place as well. Some people consider us a swing state mm -hmm. for the presidential election. How important do you see Minnesota in this race? It's very important. The Trump administration has viewed it as a bit of a prize, given how narrow uh, the, the vote was in 2016. Uh, the Trump campaign has vowed to flip it red this time round. Uh, that is not where the polls currently stand, according to our CBS News battleground tracker. But that uh, real array of what used to be that blue wall in the Midwest, uh, in the heartland, is something that the Trump campaign is trying to defend as Joe Biden seems to be gaining an edge in some of these key states. But for tomorrow, for Election Day itself, uh, the real question is, does President Trump get the in-person voter to show up in the way that the Republican Party says they will? Uh, if they do, uh, if his supporters come out, he can close this gap. So uh, this is something that is still a competitive race at this point, even though Joe Biden does uh, seem to have the edge in very key states, including Minnesota. Yeah, well, and we know what polls showed in 2016, which is a whole other story. But um, what are you doing differently? And maybe it is yeah. polling or maybe it's some other things. This, this seems like such a different election. Uh, how are you and your it team is. going to cover it differently? It is a different election. It's a far more complex election than our country has ever undertaken. Uh, I mean, if you just look at the surge in early voting that you have seen, we are currently at 70 percent of the volume we were for the entire uh, entirety of the 2016 election. Uh, we're over about 95 million people who have already cast votes. So we're in the midst of this pandemic, uh, and it is pretty incredible to see that the wheels of democracy have been moving despite all the difficulty at sta in states around the country. That said, uh, it's also going to put a big responsibility on our shoulders as journalists to explain what is different state by state, and this is a 50 state race, uh, to explain, for example, that we will know likely early in the night where Florida stands with all 29 of its electoral votes because they begin counting their ballots three weeks prior to Election Day. For a key state like Pennsylvania, they don't start counting until Election Day, and seven of their counties don't until November 4th. So we're going to have to be really transparent about that to show and explain uh, why Election Day in-person voting isn't necessarily going to be the entire story until all ballots are cast. And, 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 and talk about that a little bit more, not so much as we covered as journalists, but talk a little bit about what you think people can expect once the polls close, because, you know, even in 2016, I mean, it was a very late night, but we had a result. Are we going to have results mm -hmm. tomorrow? It was a very late night. I remember about 3 a.m. Uh, being on the air uh, in 2016. I would expect it to go very late this time around as well. We, depending on these key states like Florida, where we will know early, we could know the trend. We could know the likely winner tomorrow night. If it is a close race where uh, it is truly neck and neck. So one, one good barometer here, President Trump has a lot riding on the state of Florida. If Joe Biden takes Florida and turns it blue, that could make President Trump's pathway to those 270 votes really complicated. Uh, so that could really show us an indication. But in terms of getting that final count, uh, it could take days. Uh, Pennsylvania and Michigan have said it won't be until about Thursday or Friday that we will know final count. That often takes a few days, but this year, because of the volume, uh, we are expecting things to, to be a little bit more problematic, understandably, as these state and, and local officials uh, try to carry this out in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah, let's hope everyone's understanding. Uh, finally, talk a little bit about what uh, you and the CBS News team is going to do <laughs> uh, Yeah, tomorrow night and, and maybe through the rest of the week. What, what do you plan in terms of how you cover this? We will be on the air as the polls are closing starting at 7 p.m. and we will stay on the air well into the early morning um, and, and perhaps <laughs> beyond with the coverage as we uh, learn state by state 
what the trends are. So early in the evening, we expect to be able to pick up some of those patterns. For President Trump, he has to defend the states he won in 2016 as the incumbent. So we'll watch carefully the Georgias, the North Carolinas, some of those southern states to see early in the evening if he has that pathway. Um, and we may know early on if he has a pathway to reelection. We'll be watching that in-person tally. Do the numbers um, of supporters that the Republican Party is promising, are they showing up at the polls? We will be looking uh, carefully at how long it takes. Um, we hear from so many national security officials that this is going to be the most defended election in U.S. history because of the high level of scrutiny uh, given what our country has learned and gone through since 2016 in terms of foreign attempts at interference as well. So we expect to be sharing more details of that. Uh, the intelligence community will be briefing, for example, every few hours uh, what they are seeing, if there are any attempts to interfere on the cyber front. Uh, what does that mean for you? Well, if there are complications, for example, registering when you show up, those kind of things. We will hear from the federal government if they believe there's any kind of nefarious thing happening or if it's just simply a local computer issue. So there are a, a lot more sort of details that we expect to be able to provide the public with uh, this year. Good. We look forward to it. Thanks for chatting with us this afternoon and uh, good luck tomorrow. That was CBS News correspondent Margaret Brennan, who was also the host of Face the Nation. Tune in to WCCO and CBSN Minnesota tomorrow night for complete coverage of the 2020 election.